JPro Q Points tutorial. I'm DJ Spiegelspin, and in this video, I'm going to show you all about the Q Points in DJ Pro AI. So, this video is all about Q Points. We are going to be going through the DJ Pro AI app, and I'm going to show you how to find the Q Points, what settings in the Q Points to use, and what different settings do. So, let's get right into it. So if we are in classic mode, which is the first screen that we're going to be in when we launch the app, we could access the cue points over here. So this over here, it has like these little sliders. You click it and then there's neural mix. There is, and then right between the neural mix and the looper is the cue points. Let me just delete these so we could get started. So this is what the cue point screen is going to look like. Let me just get a regular song up here. So here we have a song. So to in order to set a cue point, you just press one of these plus buttons and now this will be saved to this song forever even if you use DJ Pro AI on a different device as long as you are still logged into the same account, these cue points will stay there forever. So you just have to set it once for each song and then it'll stay there. And now if you wanna delete one of the cue points, what you could do is over here is a pencil. It looks kind of like a pencil icon. You click that and then you could just exit off and delete it. Now DJ Pro in the version four update gave us the option to change the color so we have three, four, five, six, seven, we have eight different colors that we could use. So you could have each one of these pads because on these pads we get eight cue points for each song. So we could do eight different colors. And now my advice to you is to come up with a system that makes sense to you. So my system that I use is every song that I play, there is a start, an end, and then the drop. So the start is where I'm going to start the song. So as soon as I load up this track, instead of searching, listening in the headphones and all that, I already know a great place to start the track and a great place to start mixing out of the track with just a glance. And now for me, what makes sense to me is I have this green, I don't know if that's green or orange, I'm slightly colorblind, but I have this color as start on all of my tracks. So as soon as I load up a track, I could either, I could see the cue point up here on the big waveform, or if we have the waveforms here in the middle, you will be able to see it on the live waveform, so right there. So without even having this cue point section open, I already know I could start the track here, I could end the track here, and then I could put, I could put a, uh, the drop is gonna be right there. So the cue points really help you organize your tracks and really help you to know exactly what's happening without having to listen on your headphones or to try to just read the waveforms because you could tell when the drops are just by the waveforms, but it just makes it so much easier to have the, the start, the end, and the drop. Now you could get you could get more advanced into it on, on most of the EDM tracks that I play. I'll have both drops, so you could do a trick called the drop switch, where right when the first drop is gonna play, you could just switch to the second drop. So there's a lot of stuff you could do with cue points. Also, you could take like words of a song that you wanna emphasize, and then you could, and then you could save it as a cue point. So let me just show you something. Let's do and. Uh, um, so in the club by 50 cent. So you could have different parts of the beat or you could do different words. So I'm going to do. We can go right over here. So that says go. So in your, where you can name the cue points. So if you click on this arrow over here, there's gonna be a drop down menu. You could change the color, but then you could also change the names. I suggest using both. So this is gonna be go. So now I know whenever this track is loaded up and if I wanna use the word go, 
I could do it just like that. So any songs that have really distinct words or something that you could use as kind of like a sample or just to throw on top of the song, maybe to add a loop, you already know by your cue point because you did it in advance. Let's just go back here. All right, so we could change the colors. We could change the name of the cue point. And keep in mind that if you guys have a controller that has RGB touchpads, such as the Reloop Buddy that I have up there, then these colors are going to actually change on the controller, which is really, really cool. So you could see the color on the screen, and then you could also see it on your controller, which gives you even more access to see what's going on, and it really helps. So within this Q section, we have a couple of other menus that we could do. So we could turn off this. We have pitch cue, which I made a specific video about pitch cue, but what it does is it adds either plus or minus the pitch. So it'll either be high pitch or low pitch with, with your cue points that you have. And then, and then the slice is gonna slice it up where your cue point is. So it's a cue slice. And then we could change that to skip. So with skip, we could skip different beats. So let's say, so let's just go over here, the drop. And then if we wanted to mix out after 16 beats, you could adjust 16 beats, 32 beats, and then you could just go forward and back, forward, back, forward, back. So if you wanna do mixes and set up your mixes with two different songs from 16, let's say you want to do the mix over 16 beats, you could easily find this. Instead of having to count the lines separately, you could just use this skip button. And then down here with auto mix, we can set the start and the end times of our auto mix. So with this song, anytime this song comes on in auto mix, it is going to start at this cue point at five seconds and then it is going to end right here. So I suggest if you guys want to make a really good auto mix to have all of your songs while you're preparing them with the cue points, just add in the start and the stop. So when it comes on an auto mix, it'll start and stop at the exact spots where you want it to. And it'll start doing the mixes there. This is a way where you can make like kind of like a mashup type mix by using auto mix. All right. So now let's go over to a different screen. We're going to go over to pro mode. And then the cues, the cue section is just going to be a little bit smaller, but you still get everything that you could do there. And then down here, these are the temporary cues. I'm not sure if that's the right terminology that I'm using, but it's fine. So when you press set, let me just get, I'll get this scratch. So let's go right over here. So if we press set, that is where it's going to be when we press this playback button. So set, it's going to stay there forever until we change it. So that's good for on the fly. Like if you're in the middle of doing a mix and you want to emphasize the word or emphasize the part, or maybe you just want to start the track at that point by doing a beat match, you could kind of tap it in and then it will be playing for as long as you have the button held in. So as soon as you let go of the button, it'll go off. So if you're using this to get your mix right, you could always use another finger or slide your finger over to have the play button on permanently. But if you don't have the play button on, right after you let go of this button, that cue is gonna be over. And then as soon as you wanna change where this is gonna be, you just press set somewhere else. Wherever you press set is where it is going to start. So thanks for watching. I hope this guys this helped you learn something new about the cue points and helped you with your DJing. I'm gonna make new videos about how to do transitions using these cue points and how to do other tricks. So stay tuned for that. And if you like this video, give it a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.